<laughs> They're amazing. Oh, if we could only have faith like a little child, just to let her rip <laughs> for Jesus. Wow. How amazing and how wonderful. Thank you for each person who's been a part of this morning, for you being present here. Welcome and Merry Christmas to you. May the grace and the peace and the love of the Lord Jesus Christ shine up down upon you in a precious and amazing way this Christmas season. We're grateful to have you here and those who are among us or from us and who are out traveling today. We hope and pray that their journey goes well um, wherever they may be. But deep inside of all of us, I pray that this Christmas season can be one where the assurance of Christ Jesus, the beauty of who He is, is settled in our hearts and becomes a reality in our lives in a way that it never has before. This is the dawning of a new year, the, the, the opportunity to shine even brighter for the Lord Jesus Christ. And I trust and pray that by the end of today, in our time of gathering here, that indeed uh, that inspiration might be settled in each one of our hearts. Take a little different approach here this morning as we just spend a, a few moments in God's Word. Uh, many of you will read the Christmas rendition from the Gospel of Luke. And so today I'm uh, taking us to a little different place and uh, shooting at it from a little different angle. But I trust and pray that indeed it will still be settled in your hearts the same way. The beauty of the gift of Christ Jesus. The book of John tells us, it says, In the beginning, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning. He was in the beginning with God. All things were made through Him, and without Him was not anything made that was made. If you jump down to verse 14, it says this, And the word of which we just spoke, that you read about on the board up here, And the word became flesh and dwelt among us, and we have seen his glory, glory as of the only Son from the Father, full of grace and truth. We heard about a little bit of that in our testimony time as well. Thank you for those of us who were a part of that. I'd like for you to help me now. Read this. This is what the next verses say in the Gospel of Luke. Excuse me, of John. Uh, in chapter 1, it says this. Everybody together. In Him was life, and the life was the light of men. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome So let's think about that for just a quick moment, and we're going to read it one more time. But as you think about those penetrating rays of light that burst into any room or any place of habitation, or even into your mind as a new thought dawns within your mind, that beam of light, it dissipates and it spreads out, it abolishes, it obliterates any form or fashion of darkness, and perhaps the, the, even in a mind concept type of way, that thought process that has dawned within your mind, that new thought, it begins to infiltrate other thoughts that you may have had. Don't go too far with that. Don't get too crazy with that. But just think about that as that thought process, that light shines in to wherever you may be. What happens? There's a point of contact with wherever it goes. Let's read it one more time. In him was life. Hmm. Keep hold of that. The historical marker at the center of the town, if it had been posted back in those days, would have commemorated it as the birthplace of the mighty giant killer. A little shepherd boy turned into a mighty hero king. That was the man named David. Bethlehem was his town. Bethlehem was his birthplace. And Bethlehem was the place that he put it was because of, of David's actions that Bethlehem was put on the map. But now, as we journey through the story, as we journey through the history, as we journey through the rendition of God's Word, we find that a thousand years later, after this historical marker has been posted in the town, putting Bethlehem on the map, the thought of a conquering king, the thought of a mighty warrior, the thought of a giant killer has become a distant memory. It's beginning to fade. It's beginning to fade further and further into the past. And today, put yourself there. Robin mentioned it. This little town called Bethlehem, it's full of weary travelers. 
Travelers being reminded of an oppressive dictator, not of a mighty warrior king. Oppressive dictator that is requiring them to come to their town of birthplace, the birthplace, and come there to their birthplace and be numbered. It's not a time of gathering where they celebrate wartime victories. It's a time to be reminded that they don't have what they once were so badly wanting. Even the voice of a trusted prophet has become a very distant memory, and now some 600 years later, His words seem like a nearly impossible thing to comprehend or to believe. This is what the man said. But you, O Bethlehem, Ephrathah, who are too little to be among the clans of Judah, from you shall come forth for me, one who is to be ruler in Israel, whose coming forth is from of old, from ancient of days. As the day now turns into night in Bethlehem, The prophet's words only fill a dusty scroll. They're not an active action in people's lives. The hope of a king is only a memory, muffled by the pressing priorities of life. Raising sheep, raising children, paying taxes, and gathering grain. But this night, as the town finally falls into a sleep, though crowded as it once was, the hustle and the bustle of the census travelers has dissipated and the town now falls into a quiet rest. O little town of Bethlehem, how still we see thee lie. So quiet and still and peaceful is the town, it's hard to imagine what we read about so quickly here today. So think about it for a moment. Put to rest all the thoughts of surround sound, headphones, gadgets, No jets, no traffic, no loud ambulances, fire trucks, or police cars racing down the streets. It's just a quiet town in the middle of nowhere. And in the stillness and in the quiet of that dark night, there falls upon the entire globe, like feathers perhaps falling down, beginning to cover the entire ground just in the stillness of the night, not in a loud, boisterous way, Not with trumpets, not yet, not in a way that anyone else in all the world would imagine, but in the stillness of this night, there's a perfect, brilliant holiness that falls into this dark place. We watch this new king of Bethlehem enter into a barn-like cave to rest softly in a feeding trough. In the quietness of the night, this new king enters in, into the hay, into the smell of the manure, into a broken world that has forgotten him, most likely altogether. A broken world that is in desperate need of being fixed, filled with individual hearts that are broken, that are dark, that are shadowed from sin. This is the Christ child, the Christ child who will one day hang on a cross And during the daytime, when it suddenly turns into night and into darkness, from the cross, this chosen one from Bethlehem will die to save the world. But just as it happened on the hillsides outside of that Bethlehem down, when the angelic host lit up that starry sky and struck those poor shepherds with excitement, awe, and wonder, and fear, so also the darkness of the world's evil when the brilliance of the light of which we read about earlier bursts forth into the darkness and the sorrows and the hurt and the pain, and up from that grave of darkness and ill will, there arose a mighty warrior. The one who came through the gates of Bethlehem is here to save our souls. This is the message, First John says. This is the message we have heard from him and proclaim to you that God is is light, and in him is no darkness at all. So it was impossible for the darkness of the grave to hold in the brilliance of the light of Christ Jesus. And just as it happened in that little town, many today are still steeped in darkness. They, as Paul writes in 2 Corinthians, have their minds blinded by the ruler of this age, the prince of darkness, unable to see the light of the Savior 
poured forth through the gospel, the light and life of all people, the baby born in a manger, the Christ child, the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth, who is the image of God. For God said, let there be light. Let light shine out of darkness. We have not a lot of issues comprehending this thought process. In the third verse of the script, when God said, out of the darkness, let something be that never was. Let there be light and there was life. We believe that. It's settled in our heart. But somehow in our lives, it's not quite the same process, it seems. When the light and life of men, of men, of women and boys and girls, pierces through that darkness, and in Him all our fears and hopes come to a point where that ray, that glorious ray of beaming light shines in, conquering the fears of death, satisfying and fulfilling all of our heart's longings, hopes, and dreams, and into the mess of our own sin and shame, into the stench of our own lives, into our own manure, if you will, the light of the world shines forth. And unto us He delivers not a crisply wrapped present to sit under a nicely decorated tree, but the fulfillment and satisfaction of all of those hopes and dreams. And into the fears and all of the darkness that they bring steps forth the One who is the light and life of men. So before the ages, Paul writes, before the ages began in 2 Timothy, by the purpose and grace of the God the Father, God of love, He gave us Jesus, who abolished death and brought life and immortality to light through the gospel upon which we now stand and believe today. Through the ups and downs, the victories and the failures, a devotional that I read recently said, the hopes and the fears that God's plan was and still is moving forward. As those Bethlehem travelers gathered that night, through centuries of slavery, through the destruction of Jerusalem and the exile, through centuries of silence, through it all, God was directing history towards this moment. Jesus, the light and life of of men, of mankind, is the fulfillment of all of God's promises. Paul writes in 2 Corinthians, for all the promises of God find their yes in Him. That is why it is through Him that we utter our amen, our confirmation, our assurance is settled to God for His glory. And it is God who establishes us with you in Christ and has anointed us. Anointed us for what? To be the light bearers, to be the image of Him. How? Read the next verse. Through the Spirit that now indwells us. Through the grace and pleasure and goodwill and love and mercy of our Savior. All of your hopes, all of your fears, of all of your years are met in Jesus today. He offers a hope that cannot be denied And he abolishes the power of our worst and deepest fears. The birth, a writer says this, the birth of this baby in Bethlehem pierced the darkness of our fears the way a lit match overtakes the darkness of a cavern. Its light may be small, but darkness cannot overcome the light. And the light of a match leads to a roaring, blazing glow in the face of a dark canyon in our lives. Giving thanks to the Father, Paul writes in Colossians, who has qualified us, you, to share in the inheritance of the saints in light. He has delivered us from the domain of darkness and He has transferred us to the kingdom of His beloved Son, in whom we have redemption, the forgiveness of sins. Jesus said, if you walk in the light as I am in the light, (laughs) you will have fellowship with the Father, fellowship with me, fellowship with my Spirit, and in that all of your hopes will be fulfilled. All of the fears that your sins have brought about will be forgiven and abolished. Micah carries on in the very next verse of that passage where we begin. And he shall stand and shepherd his flock in the strength of the Lord, in the majesty of the name of the Lord his God. And they shall dwell secure. For now he shall be great to the ends of the earth, and he shall be their peace. Whose peace? 
our peace. As we think about this blessed, wonderful gift that has been given in the Christ child, in the Lord Jesus Christ, gifted to us by the grace and mercy of God, fanned into flame at just the right time, Galatians says, at the appointed time in God's sovereign plan, He also called you and me forth to bear the image of that flame that burns within us. As we bend our knees in humble submission and repentance to the Lord Jesus Christ and allowing Him to become the Lord and Savior of our lives, into the dwelling place of our being comes the Spirit of the living God. And as a representation of that today, I'm going to ask Greg or the ushers just to dim the lights we're going to just have a time of extension, extending this light from one candle to another as a representation of this gift that has been given to the mankind and the light that it bears to the world and the opportunity for us to go forth not only as image bearers but also as fan flamers. <laughs> to fan the flame not only within our own hearts through the inspiration of God's Word and the anointing of His Spirit within us but also as we walk together with brothers and sisters beside each other, linking arms, may we bear the light of Christ Jesus wherever we go and through whatever we're doing. Just a couple points of safety for us to keep in mind. Today the candle won't burn too quickly, won't burn too fast, but let's take the unburned candle to the burning candle to light. That way we don't drip wax on our best friend next to us, okay? So I'll start the process. Jackson's going to help me. We'll begin each section here. And you can just pass the flame to your neighbor. Think about this for a moment as we're doing this, all right? It's not a silly little exercise that we do every Christmas. But it's a means to call our hearts and our minds into action, into remembrance of this light and life of men that has been introduced to us. His name is Jesus. He's the hope of all the ages. He dissipates all of your fears and conquers all of your worst sorrows. Does anyone still need a candle? If you're old enough to hold one, you can have one. Does anyone still need one? No. All right. As we think about this, as we're going through this exercise, I'm just going to play a little video of an old Christmas carol. And I want you to think about the words and notice the words as they scroll across the screen. Pay attention to your flame, but also pay attention to the words. Let's do this together. The Lord bless you. Oh, little town of Bethlehem, how still we see the light above thy deep and the silent stars go by Yet in thy dark streets Shining the everlasting light The hopes and fears of all the years Are met in Christ is born of Mary and gathered all above. While mortals sleep, the angels keep the watch of wandering love. O morning stars together proclaim. God the King and peace to men on earth. How silently, how silently the wondrous gift is given. 
So God imparts to human hearts the blessings of His hand. No ear may hear His coming, but in this world of sin, where meek souls will receive Him still. The dear Christ enters in O holy child of Bethlehem Descend to us, we pray Cast out our sin and enter in Be born to us today We hear the Christmas angel The great glad tidings tell Oh, come to us, abide with us our Lord Emmanuel Just take a look around. <laughs> Friends, some of us have been going through a lot of difficult things in our lives. Some of us have just climbed to the top of a mountain of victory. Others of us are walking in the valleys of a deep, dark shadow. <laughs> Some of us have found healing for our pain. Others of us still walk through pain. That little town of Bethlehem fell asleep on that little special night <laughs> in the middle of who knows where on the calendar because they had perhaps fallen asleep to the promise and the assurance that an almighty God had offered to them. Friends, today, this same Jesus, this same Jesus, who came as a little baby, born in Bethlehem, has to given to us an indescribable gift to grasp hold of, has offered to us more than our thoughts can comprehend. Today, this same Jesus has a light that burns within him that he offers to us that the Bible tells us can't be conquered by any foe or threat. There is nothing that can snatch the light away from us. And one great and glorious day, this same Jesus will burst through the clouds. Perhaps some of those same angels that gave that glorious announcement to the shepherds on the hillside will be part of the glorious assembly that will come for us who have taken hold of the light who have embraced it and brought it into our own lives as light bearers for the King of glory. Friends, today, <laughs> know that His promises are rich. His promises are true. And while He doesn't snatch us out overnight of our, from our worst fears and failures, from our hardest sorrows and pains, He does promise a path that does lead to victory. He does promise a path that does lead to healing. In Him there is victory. In Him there is glory. And it is for you and it is for me. I trust and pray that today we can walk away from this place with a reminder of the fan, uh, excuse me, with a reminder of the flame that has been introduced into us. That He desires for you to continue to flam, to flam, to fan <laughs> into a hot burning torch for Him wherever you may go. Before we blow out our candles, it's maybe perhaps not a chosen Christmas song, but it ought to be. It's for the little guys can help us too. This little light of mine, let's just sing one round of that, all right? So don't make fun of me, but here we go. This little light.
And I hope and pray that's what we choose to do today with the light that Jesus has introduced into us. All right, friends, now don't blow sparks over everybody, but we'll out in our candles now, all right? So the worship team can come forward and lead us in some closing numbers, but just a quick couple points of safety here as we toss our candles so we don't want to get a message across the hotline tonight that uh, we had a little accident in the place. So in the back of the auditorium, there are metal, 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 metal receptacles that these little guys get tossed into. I don't care what you do with your coffee cups, but these guys go into the metal. Everybody, metal, metal. There we go, metal trash cans. There's a couple little buckets and then some other metal receptacles in the back. So uh, deposit your candle in there, please. And uh, I think there might still be enough. We can save ourselves a little and uh, burn it again next year. How's that? Thank you so much for being a part of today. Uh, just a special time to gather together and just to celebrate the birth of our Savior. I was just struck as these little guys were up here singing to us. You know, our Savior, the King of glory, came in the form and fashion of these little guys. Perhaps one day he was standing in the front of a synagogue somewhere, singing a song, reciting a verse. But this same Jesus rose up to be our conquering king and friend, and he reigns at the Father's right hand today. Fully God, fully man, embracing all of our fears, all of our sorrows, associating with our deepest pains, conquering our greatest temptations, and ruling victorious at the Father's right hand. And he's coming again to take us to be with him.